What's up beautiful people, Jay here from Jay's Way. You wanted to know how to set up a uh, shop and create listings in Etsy, so that's what we're gonna do. Okay, minimize this. All right, so you've logged into your Etsy account, assuming you've created one. If not, just go in, create a, an account like you normally would, and then all you do is you click on Sell on Etsy. This will bring you to this tab, which says millions of shoppers can't wait to see what you have in store, so get started. It takes you to this tab. You click Let's Do It. What brings you to Etsy? I'm just starting out as a first time ever. Safe to assume we can choose this one for most of you, or you can just totally skip the question. Next, this brings us to a few tutorials. Here you can tick boxes for anything that you'd like help with, or skip the question, hit next again, and now for the fun part, start your shop. So the first thing we do after clicking that is select your language. By default, it's Deutsch. We don't want to uh, sprechen Sie Deutsch, so we will pick English. Your shop location, mine is Canada, so I'm going to pick Canada for shop currency we'll go Canadian dollar save and continue and we can name our shop we'll go Jay's way to here and as it says don't sweat it you can just draft a name now and change it later so Etsy will allow you to change your name without a review or anything you can do it on your own whenever you want one time so save and continue now we're into stock your shop so the first thing you need to do is add a mock-up so in order to create a mock-up we can go into place it I like place it for ease of use there's a link in the description please use that it is absolutely free to you but it does help me out so I can continue to make some content for you guys so we would pull up our artwork folder you can see here I've got three designs penguin one which is candy penguin two which is present and penguin three holding a lollipop so you can go up here hover and it'll show you all kinds of different mock-ups that are available to you we're gonna do t-shirts but I want to be a little more specific so we're gonna type Christmas t-shirt markup there you go oh look that one's already got a penguin it looks like it's meant to be so we'll click on that one we'll close that window so for shirt color we can go with something which would be close to a Kelly green let's go with penguin number one drag and drop file here and there's a live preview down here so you can see where it will be placed on the shirt and we can just make it a little smaller move it up I think that's a pretty accurate representation so now we've got our mock-up that's as easy as it is you just click download They'll email you when it's ready, or you can click to download immediately. We can go ahead and create a few more just by scrolling down here. There's a cute kid, and now you can see it's still got the artwork that we had from our first listing, so it's already ready to go. Just click download, and you've already got your crew neck sweater mock-up. How easy is that, right? The alternatives here would be to use a second piece of artwork. It says drop file here. It'll automatically replace it, repeat the steps, Crop and download. Lather, rinse, repeat for a different one. Et voila. And that's how easy it is to create mockups using Placeit. So now we can go back to our last Etsy tab here. We'll just take our first one, drop it there. So now you can see the preview, you can set it so you can move it down, you can move it so where it just shows the picture. In this case, we're gonna showcase the artwork. And here you've got options to add video, which is a pretty cool thing. Started about a year ago, it's crazy how fast time flies. But again, you can go into Placeit, mockups, apparel, merch videos. You can see how the background is moving a bit on it, an entire motion. There's lots of different things you can do here. There's some cool ones. It makes the list look a little more fun and interesting too, right? So if it fits with your niche or something fun, have at it. Why videos? Based on Etsy's millions of dollars of research and design, people who watched a video or saw a video were more inclined to buy. Now we'll move down to our title, Cute Kids Penguin Christmas Shirt. We would want to use uh, your long tail keywords, the most important ones at the beginning, which would be Cute Kids Penguin Christmas Shirt. And you would have done some research so you know what keywords to put here as part of your overall SEO. Who made it? You can say you did and then also add a production partner later or you can say a member of my shop. In this case we're gonna go another company or person. What is it? Finished product. When was it made? They're made to order. That's the beauty of print on demand. Category. So we could go clothing t-shirts. These are the categories that shoppers will find the item in if they filter. Primary color we can say white. Secondary color you can offer multiple options offer more than one. This just lets people know that more colors are available available under your listing. Choose sleeve length. This is optional and this will really be dependent on what you want to offer. If you wanted to add multiple items in one listing then you could leave it and move on but in our case we can go short sleeve. Suggestion is crew. Yes it's a crew neck short sleeve. Clothing type. If we don't fit into one of these it's okay. They're all optional. If there aren't any that apply you can 
to skip the attribute. Using as many of these as you can though will help you to get found in Etsy search results. Renewal options. So when you list something, it costs you 20 cents and it will be good for four months or until the item sells, at which point it will either renew automatically or you'll have to renew the listing yourself. I like to leave this as automatic. For 20 cents, it will be live, so that's if it hasn't sold, it will stay live in your shop for four months. It will cost you then again another 20 cents to relist for another four months. This will be in the event that it does not sell. If it does sell, it'll automatically renew if you have an inventory number of more than one. So if you have five or six in showing in stock, it'll automatically renew until those run out. So I leave it at automatic. That way, if it does happen to be stagnant and not sell in four months, I won't forget it won't go to expired and I won't have to renew it. So for type, it's either a physical or a digital product. It's physical, which is a tangible item. In your description, shoppers will only see the first few lines of your description at first, so make it count. This is exactly what I preach. These are the things that will tug at their emotional heartstrings, right? So this is an opportunity for you to say, hey, this is why you should buy this. So we could put something like, Got the cutest kid on the planet? Get them this cute penguin tea this Christmas. What we've done here, we've taken most of the major keywords, which is cute penguin Christmas tea, and put in your description, but put it in a way that is a little more pragmatic. It draws the attention from the customer, and it's a logical way for them to read the description about it. And then under this, you can have process, story behind the item. Some people like to have a link to another item if you sell the crew neck sweatshirt or some elements of the size chart or different things, anything you want to use to connect with the customer. The preview listing is a Google search result. So when somebody searches in Google, you guys are familiar with how this looks. It's blue, which is a link, and it'll show. So you got the cutest kid on the planet, get them this cute penguin tea this Christmas. So what I've done here is create a call to action and using a rhetorical question, like obviously they're gonna think they've got the cutest kid on the planet, right? A call to action is telling them to do something. It's telling them to get this tea if they've got the cutest kid on the planet. And of course they do, so they will hopefully identify with this and purchase the listing. So we can add a new production partner. We'll say uh, Printify. You have the option here now to show this production partner's name to buyers. I personally do not show that, so this will only be between you and Etsy proper. You can turn that off. The descriptive title is what will appear there. It's just something that will appear instead of the production partner's name. So location here, their US headquarters is in San Francisco, and about production partner is something you can just fill in here to tell people what they do. So you can make something a little fun. So why are you working with this partner? I don't have the technical ability or equipment to make it entirely by myself. I would put this one for this. What is your role in the process? If you're the designer, you can say I design everything myself. What is the partner's role in the production process? They do everything for me. You can see how it'll look. A local print shop. Now you can save partner. We must add the partner. So we will tick that box now. Add your first section. So we could say Christmas. As far as tags go, you want to repeat what's in your title. So we can go up here. I've actually filled out the title and I like to include commas here which make it easier and you paste them here separated by commas it'll auto populate the tags you can only have 20 character limits so I'll just throw in a couple of extra commas here wherever it looks to be too long and click add now you can see the ones that it did populate and there are a couple more that are over 20 characters so we can just do Christmas gift t-shirt penguin gift for kids add and throw a comma there too so now you've got three tags left penguins are local to Antarctica Christmas is in the winter and people also celebrate Christmas in July so I'll put July now we've used all 13 of our tags so for materials these are optional you can check with your printer that you're going to choose and find out what the makeup is of the shirt in this case I know it's cotton and I know that DTG is done with water-based eco-friendly inks which is another nice advantage of print on demand. Also, you are not doing uh, any bulk orders, so you don't have a bunch of stuff taking up space. You know, that carbon footprint is reduced a bit because you're only making these shirts to order, so there's no extra waste going out anywhere. Inventory and pricing. So we will adjust the quantity here. I typically put a number that would create a sense of urgency but not so much so that if you sold three or four in one day that you know they'll run out. Some people like to put 999 because that is the max you can do. I don't like to do that because there's nothing worse than walking into a shop and seeing what you thought was gonna be a really cool item 
just seeing that there's thousands and thousands of them. What's the sense of urgency there, right? What's what's the point of buying something if you're just one of a million? You want something kind of unique, which is what most buyers are on Etsy for. So for that reason, I like to put some arbitrary number that just looks kind of natural or plausibly real. Skew, we can ignore those. So variations are probably the most tedious part about this whole process, and they're not even that hard. Add variations, you would add secondary color options. You can go ahead and pick the colors you want to offer, black, green, red, and if you wanted, for example, to offer a royal blue and a navy blue but it's not there you can just create a new option then you would type it in here navy blue add and the same for royal now you've got your six colors so for add a variation now we're going to create our own and call it sizes and click add we're going to tick this box over here for prices vary for each size that's because the POD companies, the printers, actually charge you different pricing based on what size you pick. I already know enough about the youth tees to know that these are common colors. So if we go into Printify and we go into their catalog, you can see kids' clothing here. So I click on t-shirts, sort by lowest price so we can, you know, maximize the bank for buck here. And while these happen to be a much nicer feeling, softer tee, kids aren't that picky. It's always the parents that are picky, but the kids don't give a crap. They're gonna wear whatever they think is cool based on the design. What I know about this tee is that it's a solid staple. It's a little bit more of a robust tee that would stand the test of time when it comes to kids wear and tear. Plus, the main thing here is that there's 12 print providers. So when we get deeper into Q4, we might experience some supply chain shortages, which I'm sure you've uh, experienced in, at some point or another in the last two years through the pandemic. I like to know that there's several colors here and several print providers who are offering this particular garment. So we can click on that and you can see now that we've got a few here. I like to sort by production time. Anything under two business days, you're talking some pretty quick turnaround here. This is a day and a half. So if you got an order on a Monday and processed it on a Monday morning at nine o'clock, it would probably have gone out by Tuesday afternoon, which is printed, packaged, and on the way to your customer, which is kind of incredible, right? For you not really having to do much else. So what we do here is we can see that there's six colors offered. It doesn't offer everything that we wanted to offer, but if you want to save some money, you can see here if we went red and they offer red, red five sizes you can see that monster digital charges around seven to seven and a quarter where swift pod for the same color charges significantly more so what you could do is use these guys to fill your shirts and then when it comes to the green shirt you could use these guys and we will click prices vary for each size as you saw, prices will vary dependent on the size you pick. So you want to make sure that you're charging appropriately. So here we can list youth small to XL and we can click update. We can scroll down now. You can see all the options here. So how do we pick pricing? The way I like to do it to be safe and err on the side of caution is to pick pricing based on the most expensive potential option that we would have to pick. We can see here that my locker's base price is the most expensive. The reason why I want to use the most expensive one is because in the event that there are supply chain shortages, you want to make sure that you have backup printers and then you want to make sure you have backups for your backups. So in that case, we can look here and see what a standard black would be and you can see 893 regardless of size. So we can go into Swift POD, here's more details, and you can see that they range up to $11.40 and that their shipping is $4. Next, I'll come to Sales Samurai and use their calculators to figure out what I'm doing in terms of pricing. So you can use a profit calculator here. We know that we can get up to $11.40 for the black. We'll use that. Material cost is $11.40. Our shipping cost, we can see over here that it is $4. I know that they're charging a bit of a premium right now. I think they're adding an extra 50 cents, so we'll just make our shipping cost 450. There's a premium on shipping during the holidays, believe it or not. And then we'll put in a number that a lot of people seem to think that they can get away with charging $20. So let's see if that happens. $20 and let's say free shipping. You think it's plausible? Let's find out. We click calculate and here we go. We've got a listing fee of 20 cents. We've got a transaction fee, which is 6.5%. That's what Etsy charges is basically the way they make their money. Payment processing fee and your total fees come to $2.35. So our estimated profit here now is our $20 list price. Subtract our $15.90 total cost, which is materials plus shipping, and then subtract our Etsy fees, and we're left with an estimated profit of $1.75.
that doesn't seem super lucrative, right? So right off the bat, I always charge a shipping price of $5. We can recalculate and then boom, we're already up to $6 profit. The other thing I'll do is I'll never sell a shirt for $20. I'll charge, you know, let's say $27.50 to see what happens here. I've got a profit of $13.06 with a 40% margin. That's pretty high for retail. Retail averages around 30 to 35%. The nice thing about having an initial price tag of something this high will allow us to have a 20% off sale one day. We can click calculate. You can still see that our margin is now down to 30%, but it is still significant showing a profit of just over $8. And even if we wanted to increase that to, I don't know, 25 or even let's go 30%. We do 30% sale, which is pretty heavy duty. I don't think I've ever done a 30% off sale or something that significant other than like a Black Friday or Cyber Monday type thing. But even then that would allow us a 23% margin and $5.60 profit. The other nice thing about this is don't forget that even if we have a 20% off sale like I said but we were using monster digital now which is ideally who we would be trying to use regularly or more often they're charging 724 on average calculate that comes to 1225 we have a 45% margin with a 20% off sale happening so that's significant numbers that's the kind of profit margin I like to look for you know that makes me kind of salivate that way so if we were to now say 25 and calculate, you're still making $11 a shirt, which is huge for having a 25% off. And the customer sees that they're getting their $7 off, so they feel great about that too. So now we can go back to Etsy using this 2750 number, copy, paste, paste, paste. So that's done. Personalization we can leave off because we're not offering personalization on this item. If we were going to offer personalization, like if you wanted to add a name, you can say add name here and you'll see how it'll show up what the buyer will see here and then that is where the buyer can enter a name if you wanted to offer the opportunity to add a name or personalize something personalization is optional it'll show optional here and if personalization is not optional when the buyer tries to check out it'll show up red and they'll have to actually enter something here for our purposes today we are not offering personalization and now we're into delivery options so this is an area that confuses a lot of people but we're going to go through this and make it really simple we are not going to do what is recommended we're going to enter them manually country of origin and say the united states because that is where our printer is origin postcode for san francisco i googled earlier and i know it's 94016 then we come down to processing time we've seen over here that the processing times range from one and a half business days to 2.9 right now. What I always like to do is allow for two business days buffer. So for processing times, I would create a custom range and go one, two, five. That way, in the event that the POD companies get their items out in time, the customer sees it as being marked shipped on day two. That'll make you look great because now you're kind of under promising and over delivering. You're setting them up for an idea that it could take up to five business days, which is about a week. So instead of seven days, they get it in two business days, which will make you look amazing because you're telling the customer here that you're going to make sure that it's shipped and into the mail system within five business days when in reality it will be a day or two so they're going to be very pleasantly surprised standard delivery you can go first class mail one to five business days okay what you'll charge so i'll leave this as fixed price the other option is free delivery we're not going to do that and we're going to assume that it's not canadian currency here for the majority and that it's us dollars because that's what we based our uh, calculations on and put the five dollars we calculated for we won't get charged as much for a second shirt as we did the first so that's pretty normal. I know it cost me $8 from experience to ship two t-shirts. So we can safely add $3, but just for a buffer, we'll add an extra 50 cents. This tells the customer when they add one to cart, they're gonna get charged $5 shipping fee. When they add a second item, they're gonna add $3.50 to that shipping fee for a total of $8.50. So they'll see a discounted shipping. It won't be $5 per item, that sort of thing. So if you choose to ship to Canada, it'll largely depend on the POD you use and what service they use. I'll set this as other and then our delivery time we can put three to seven business days which gives us five to nine regular calendar days which is about average if it was shipped from Canada you might want to add maybe one or two business days there if you were going to continue to use one of these two for example that ship from estates because it has to go through customs that way but if you were using a company that prints like duplium here from canada to canada you could cut this back to six or seven business days what you'll charge free delivery 
Canadian shipping you can see is a little more expensive here. So I would make this always around $7. Additional item would be more like four. And again, we're in US dollars. And we're going to delete everywhere else for today. We're just gonna leave it to Canada and the US. Delivery upgrades, we're also gonna leave blank for now. We're gonna save this as our delivery profile. Name of profile will be, I'll just call it T's. So now you can see that we've created a shipping profile called T's. It's fixed prices, $5 domestic, one to five business days processing time, and ships from San Francisco with that zip code. We can now skip down to here. You can see the postage price. If they were to go to Canada, you can see what it would cost. That's the total checkout. So that would be our $27.50 plus our $5 comes to $32.50. For returns and exchanges, you can apply a simple policy here. I don't like to do that. I don't want to allow them to return or exchange. I will set up a custom policy. So when it comes to refunds and exchanges, I don't allow them if I'm not at fault. What you can do here is not accept returns and not accept exchanges. What I like to do here instead of accepting returns or exchanges, as you can see in this video, I outline exactly what I do for the customer to allow them to keep a shirt, get a second shirt, and save a bit of money buying that second shirt. And I position it to them in a way that they will save more money if they actually buy a second item. That way that keeps you in the black, you're not out anything, and the customer ends up with a second shirt that they can either give to you know a friend or they can donate it to somebody in need and feel great about themselves. All right, and I will save and apply here. So our policy is set. No returns or exchanges. We can preview what it'll look like so you can see here now we've got black green red white blue navy new small medium large cotton water based got a little bit of a description here and we can save and continue so now we can add more listings instead of going through that whole process again all we have to do is copy and now we can go to let's say we wanted to sell this uh, penguin artwork one with the candy cane now we can just drag and drop that one delete this one and now we've got our green thumbnail here that actually looks pretty good so I'll just cancel and leave it as is. Everything is already populated down here, which is kind of nice. And there's nothing else to do but swap out some of those keywords. This is an opportunity now that if you're in the same niche, let's say it's all sports, for example, you would only have to swap out the specific sport related terminologies, or if it's dogs, the dog breed, or fur baby, or dog mom, those kinds of keywords are actually gonna remain the same. So in this case, we can swap out lollipop for candy cane. And now we've got cute animal Christmas top. I will just change the Order of this a bit so that it looks a little different to the customer and that's almost all of it already the description here can stay the same because it does contain the bulk of our major keywords and we can go down to our tags now swap out a couple that may not be super relevant so we can put candy cane and maybe stocking stuffer and there you have it. It's already got the quantity. It's already got the variations. You've got your colors. It's already defaulted to the shipping profile. Move my head out of the way. Save and continue. And you've got two listings. Now we save and continue. This brings us to how you'll get paid. Are you an individual or a business? If you've got a registered business that you'd like to open your shop under, then you would click that. Most people are going to fall into this category, as Etsy says right here. So you could leave that as individual. Country of residence. In my case, it's Canada. First name, last name, date of birth, taxpayer information, which is your mailing address and that sort of thing and where your bank is located so they know where to deposit the funds and if for example I picked Canada great your payment will be in Canadian dollars and then you can put in your bank name and account numbers and all that and once you set up the banking info for how you get paid you are set up to your billing information for which you'll need a credit card after which brings you to this page where you can set up two-factor identification then we can click open your shop and your shop is open for business. And that's it, your shop is now open for business. You can click on a listing here. You can kind of see what it looks like, that sort of thing. You can go into edit, create more mock-up pictures, publish, and now you can see what the customer would see. So they can either click on this image or they can cycle through the images with these arrows. Colors options there, you've got your sizes there. Your shop and listings are now ready to go. We can click on your shop manager now and you have a bunch of different information in here that you can take a look at as you want and go through. Other videos I have will show you more of this stuff in depth. You can also click on this little pen here and edit 
You can add your shop title now. You can do a few things. You can add some updates. You can add videos, how-tos, process shots, different things. It tells you exactly what you can do here or what you can use the space for. So share photos of your process, workspace, anything that might inspire buyers. A lot of people with POD think, well, I don't really have much to show. But you can take a picture of something of your screen while you're in the middle of designing something or your office space and you know even if it's just your desktop setup ultimately it's just an insight view for the customer right so it lends some kind of authenticity to who you are your brand that sort of thing these are all things you can go through and add on your own time and you can also do all of that in place it or other places like canva or kittle or that sort of thing my next video is going to show you what to do once you get an order and how to link your shop to printify see you in the next one